Hey guys, King Gath here with another patch for Sim Settlements 2. This is patch 2.1.2, which I'm calling Unlimited Power. And yes, I and you are required to say it like that. <laughs> the uh, And the reason I called it that is because Workshop Framework today has its 2.2.0 update, which has a lot of cool stuff regarding power. Now, obviously, all of you using SS2 do have Workshop Framework as well, so I thought it was appropriate to cover that in this video extensively because all of you are going to benefit from these changes. Uh, now, before we get into that, I want to thank some patrons because they ensure that the, our dev team doesn't have to pay for all of our servers and, and community tools and uh, dev costs that come up from buying new equipment and whatnot. So, huge shout out and thank Thanks to Scott Rohde, Gina M, Just Reds, Bree, Wade Lichen, and Wanderer. Thank you all. And thank you everybody else who's contributed in various ways. If I haven't shouted you out yet, don't worry, I will catch up one day, one day when uh, when you guys stop uh, joining in droves. It's been an amazing, amazing ride ever since we launched the Patreon. You guys uh, are ensuring I can never catch up on that list, which is just fantastic. Uh, make sure that uh, we don't, again, we don't have to dig into our pockets to pay for this while we're already investing a lot of time. So I'm sure the dev team is thankful that I don't ever bug them for money. All right, let's get into the patch notes for today. So the first thing I'll cover is the stuff that's SS2 exciting. Um, so SS2 has a lot of bug fixes today and it's 2.1.2 patch. And the biggest one that I can show you, I actually happen to notice this guy over here is showing it off already, is that I went through and redid the nav mesh for a ton of buildings in SS2. So with SS2, a lot of the buildings came from Sim Settlements 1, and when we ported them over, a lot of the nav mesh was lost. And rebuilding nav mesh, as anybody who's done it will tell you, is a thankless, boring job. Um, I actually sometimes find it uh, relaxing and entertaining to do, but this time was not one of those times because I spent about eight hours doing it over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I'll, I'll finish the rest of the buildings in another pass someday, but for now I need a break, mental break from that. So I re-nav meshed a lot of them. I focused on the residential because those I think were the biggest offenders that a lot of you are seeing. So a lot of the SS1 building plans that were included with SS2 for residential, they were lacking nav mesh completely and they now have it. So you should find your settlers suddenly able to make it to their beds without having to teleport there. So that I think will be a nice little uh, visual improvement to the uh, gameplay experience. Now, I get, like I said, I'll get to the others eventually. All right, now let's talk about the uh, meaty stuff for Workshop Framework. So if you are not familiar with this, Workshop Framework adds this manage menu to your settlement workbenches. Mercy. And if you go to that now, you'll find that I've changed it a little bit. It's reorganized to be alphabetical now because now there are enough, uh, enough options where having you know, it out of order is not useful. So, but previously I believe we had settlement layout at the top just to make, draw attention to it. But just know if you're looking for layout, it just moved down a few slots. So there are two new menus here. There's power tools and settlement ownership. Settlement ownership lets you claim or unclaim a settlement. So if you want to just get rid of a settlement from your, from your control and just give it back to the settlers, you can do that. Or you can just walk up to any settlement without doing its quests and just claim it immediately. So that should also help those of you who have problems with losing settlements to happiness. Now these options for claiming settlements were already available in the Workshop Frameworks MCM menu, but now they're just, I think this is a little easier to access and more people will actually see it. All right, next up is the Power Tools menu. This has a lot of power in it, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is what's available to all users, uh, Xbox players, PC players that don't have R4SC. And so when you go to Power Tools, you're just going to see this, Convert Settlement to Faux Powered. So what Faux Powered uh, is something I call it when a item that requires power normally uh, can have its functionality without actually being uh, powered. So a good example of this would be your radio recruitment beacon. So right now, if we highlight this, it requires a power, it's not working. So what the faux power can do is it basically takes all the items in your settlement that require power and it, it lies to them and tells them they have power without putting them in the grid. Now, the benefit of that is, one, you don't have to worry about power anymore. If so it's it's a, a balance change in the sense that you have less stuff to build and manage. But the real advantage and the real reason we even offer this is that the power grid is probably the number one source of crashing for settlements. So when you arrive at a settlement and it crashes, it's almost certain that it's because your settlement has a bad power grid node. And power the power grids and the behind the scenes, this is a bug in base Fallout 4. We know exactly what causes it, but we don't have any permanent solutions. To create a solution would either require Bethesda to patch the game or for uh, something like buff out to rework the way the power grids function. Now we've given that information to a lot of people, but so far no one's acted on it. Hopefully one day, but until then, I'm going to keep creating solutions that I know how 
to try and alleviate this issue. So uh, that brings us to our F4SE solutions, which I think are much more powerful and much better. So I actually like the wiring. I like having wires and stuff. I think it's actually can be fun to wire up a settlement. I think it looks cool. So I don't want to have to give that up. But for those of you guys on Xbox, it's your only option, unfortunately, because we don't have access to create or um, manipulate wires in scripting. That's not something that the base game allows. It is something that F4SE enables. And more importantly, it's something that Registrator 2000 and C Dante have enabled. So those are two mod authors. They've created fantastic mods. I'm sure a lot of you guys are using. Um, but Registrator 2000 in particular has been very supportive of SS2, especially back when it first came out. And uh, he and I had lots of conversations about some of the bugs that plague settlements. And so way back then in 2018, we had a conversation about these power grid issues. He created the power grid tools. And in addition, in a conversation we had, he created access to the scrap and store functions. Those that you have when you hover over an item and you can see that it says scrap or store and you can put things in your workbench or destroy them. We don't have access to that through Papyrus. But what Power Grid Tools did, this is just a experimental feature he added and fortunately never removed from the DLL, he exposed those two functions to Papyrus. So I've taken advantage of those today for this patch of Workshop Framework. And I, again, thanks to uh, him for allowing me to include a copy of Power Grid Tools. So if you get a warning after installing the latest Workshop Framework that you're getting a DLL file replaced, that is expected. I have permission to do so, and I will continue to update it every time he updates his mod if that's the case. So you will have a, a overwrite copy of Power Grid Tools that is expected. So here's what you gain right. access to uh, with these new tools. And there's a few things we have to talk about with these. So the first one is auto wire settlement. So this does exactly what you're probably hoping, which is it is going to calculate all the spots where a wire could be, and then it's going to create you a new power grid with wires uh, and it tries to do it in an optimal format. So I looked up a lot of algorithms for how mapping software works to, to optimize this and do it quickly. And I took that code and put it into Papyrus and uh, made it in a way that we can get in a power grid that's cl pretty close to what a player might build themselves. So what it does is it tries to grab clusters of items and wire them all together. And then it tries to connect each cluster to its neighbors so that you have a continuous power grid that is minimally connected so that you don't have a, a whole bunch of, ever, of wires. For example, you know, you don't want every one of these power poles all connected to this generator, you want a series of them. So we created an algorithm to do that. And you can see it's, it looks pretty natural. I think that's exactly how I had it wired when uh, I built this myself. Now this should, uh, one more wire should create right there in just a moment. And uh, it'll basically create what feels like a pretty natural grid. There are gonna be a couple of sec exceptions to that. One is, yep, there it goes, uh, is that uh, it is incapable of detecting geometry. So you're gonna have stuff like this where it's clipping through signs or clipping through buildings, like it's going through the center of this building, but it's pretty minimal that that occurs and you can easily clean that up yourself in workshop mode and still get 90% of the work done for you. The other one it does occasionally is it doesn't know where optimal spots are. Like for example, I would probably never droop this wire across the road like that, but the game has no way to know that there's a road there that people would want to path. Instead, what it uses to limit the amount of big droopy wires is it tries to keep wires as close as possible to the vanilla wiring limit so that you don't get gigantic wires, but occasional Occasionally, because it couldn't make a better connection to the nearby to this cluster over here, it made that connection. But uh, because you know it's it's code, and uh, in order to keep it optimized, we have to take certain liberties and shortcuts. For example, if it had if the code had reanalyzed all the other grids, it would have found that there was already a connection over there, so that was unnecessary. But again. I still think it, with the, even with these occasional mistakes, I still think it looks great. It gets really close to what I do manually anyway, um, so I think you guys will appreciate that. So that is one tool that you can make use of. Now the next couple of tools I'm gonna show you are either already available to you prior to this patch or are experimental. So let's start with the ones that were already available, and that are Repair Power Grid and Destroy Power Grid. Uh, for those of you guys who follow a lot of my development closely, you're, you're aware of these. They were added to the MCM menu a while ago in Workshop Framework, and they were also run automatically in prior patches of Workshop Framework when you arrived in a settlement. So what would happen is you'd arrive in a settlement, Workshop Framework would check if the grid was corrupt and then try and repair it. If it failed, to repair a corrupt grid, it would just eliminate that grid altogether. Now, at some point in development, I turned those options off by default because it was really irritating to players to have their grid destroyed and then have to rewire it up. So basically restored it back to vanilla behavior. The vanilla game already had this problem. This is not a new problem we're introducing. This is a existing problem we're trying to solve. Now with this patch, those options are re-enabled once again. And the reason I've done that is because as, you, as you've seen now, Workshop Framework can automatically wire up a settlement. And when you automatically wire up a settlement like that, it does create fresh new grids. 
So now, when you arrive at a settlement, if you have those options enabled, and I'm gonna show you where they are because any of you who already had a save running from before this patch might have had these off. You may have not turned them on yourself. But if you go into Workshop Framework, and if you don't see these, if you don't have MCM, this will be available in the Workshop Framework Hollow Tape as well, which can be crafted at a chemistry station. And you'll find under the Framework Controls, there's Power Grid, Auto Repair, and Auto Destroy. Any saves created after this patch will have these on by default, but everyone else, you may or may not have them on depending on when you installed your, your workshop framework updates, when you started your save game, or if you had already turned them on manually. So you might, I recommend highly, if you have F4C, come in, turn these on. Uh, because now, when you get a corrupt power grid, when you automatically show up in a settlement, it will pop up and warn you. It'll say, hey, we, destruct, we, we, we destroyed the grid because it was totally corrupt, could not be rescued. And then it will ask, do you want us to recreate your power grid for you with the wiring data that you already have? And then that will cause General. this to happen. So you can actually do this manually or you'll be offered to do it um, automatically when you arrive at a settlement where the power grid was corrupted. So if you do rebuild power, uh, power grid here, this, when you guys get it, it's going to have the word experimental added to the top because there is a chance this can crash your game. Now to combat that, any of these tools that I've flagged as experimental, they will make an autosave before they run so that when you reload, so if it crashes, you can reload that autosave and it will bring you right back up to this screen and that way you can say, no, never mind, I know it's going to, to crash. And if you run into that, which should be rare, the solution is go through and manually scrap all your wires and then come back and just use the auto wire tool. But for most of you, all like none of the testers experienced this crash. I've only experienced this crash twice ever, um, but, uh, the uh, this this will run, and what this is going to do is going to pop you into workshop mode. It's going to analyze all the wires that are already there, and then it's going to try and recreate them so that a new grid is spawned. So if we watch closely, we'll see that all these wires will flicker in and out of existence for a second. This whole process only takes maybe two minutes, maybe a little bit less, and uh, it will recreate the grid for you. So now you can have the auto grid repair and destruction options on, knowing that if it if the grid gets destroyed, you don't have to go through and manually rewire things. So this should greatly eliminate crashes for players who use uh, Workshop Framework and F4SE because now you can see the wires are flickering because now the uh, grid can be self-repairing, self-destroying if need to, if they can't repair it for some reason. And then not only that, it can redo the wiring for you so you don't have to do it manually. So for me in this settlement, this is going to be a huge boon because this settlement has something funky in it that causes is the grid to corrupt all the time. Uh, I am lurking on additional tools to help uh, to help analyze and determine what's causing those because my guess is that there are some certain items that uh, we're using either, whether they be from some settlements too or generic workshop items that are more likely to cause it. Uh, I'm gonna start putting in some tools to collect data. But until then, I just wanted to get you guys tools to alleviate a problem that I've been experiencing greatly. And it was really fun to write that auto wiring code because uh, it's just fun to see when an algorithm can create something similar to what a human would. So those are some new tools. And then the last tool I will show you is uh, one that I just added for those of you who just wanna play with the auto wire settlement. I just added this last minute because like, this would be fun to do, as you can actually destroy all your wires. So if you wanna destroy the wires and then see what auto wire settlement creates, you have that option Need as well. Something? Destroy all wires, again, mm -hmm. An experimental feature because scrapping wires while we can fake it with with uh, scripts in the vanilla game they don't fully scrap it and they prevent new wires from being created so this new scrap wire code that's used in the recreation and with that particular option to destroy all wires that is only enabled by these experimental functions that registrator 2000 has provided us through power grid tools and i have submitted them to the frsc team to try and hopefully that they can eliminate these crashing issues from them and make them so that they don't require you to sit in workshop mode and then hopefully get those added to frsc proper i don't know if it will happen but i've done my done my my homework and tried to do my best to get that to happen but in the meantime we have these options available i think uh, these are going to make your guys lives a lot easier as far as this damned power grid system and then going back to that the faux power option for xbox players if you're tired of power grid crashes if you're just tired of walking your settlements and having them crash ever you have a new solution available, which is to just stop using wires and then start using that. And then when you're done building for a session, go over, click that faux power, let it wire or let it power everything up and continue on your day. Because when things are, are faux powered like that, they're not part of the grid and you shouldn't run into those crashes anymore. So hopefully I've made some of your guys' lives much easier today. And like I said, this isn't the end. We'll keep doing that. So definitely go read the full patch notes. There are a lot more fixes in SS2 and in Workshop Framework. The full patch notes will be linked below. For Workshop Framework, the patch notes are always available on the public Git repo for Workshop Framework, which hopefully I remember to link in the description today since uh, this, is, this is a heavy Workshop Framework focused patch. 
All right, so those of you guys who made it this far, you know this is my favorite part. It's where I get to give away some merch. Uh, so if you're interested in getting some some settlements merch, we got t-shirts, we got coffee mugs, we've got notebooks, etc. cetera. Uh, I am going to give away a gift certificate to go buy that from our little merch store. And uh, I've actually upped the amount. It's now up to uh, $25. We used to give away $20 certificates because I realized that the cost of t-shirts went up during, somewhere during the pandemic on, uh, on our store. And that's not controlled by us. That is controlled by the company Threadless we use. And so now you should be able to afford a t-shirt, which prior uh, in the last few months, you probably wouldn't have been able to. So that, that has been rectified. And then those of you guys who just want something like, you could probably use this to get like a notebook and a coffee mug. I, I actually don't know what the, I don't remember what the costs of each of those things are anymore. Again, Threadless controls all the pricing. Um, so if you're interested in getting some free merch, here's what you need to do. You're gonna leave a comment below with a hashtag I'm gonna tell you, but make sure you include more than the hashtag because I go through it manually, read all these comments find the hashtags i'd like to read more than just the hashtag so you know give me a uh, something about some settlements you like tell me uh, something you hate tell me a bug report tell me a funny story of that happened to you while playing some settlements something like that um, i'll go through gather those up and also include some contact information and don't do an email address please don't do an email address or you're gonna get spammed um not by me but by bots so include say your nexus username or your simsettlements.com forum username something like that where i can contact you and say hey you won here's your gift certificate so here is your hashtag for today Hashtag power tools. So looking forward to giving away some merch. So definitely leave your comments below. All right, guys. All that said, take care and enjoy the mods.